Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we're taking a look today at the HP Laptop 14. This is a lower end laptop, but it has a new Ryzen 5500U processor on board and it actually does a pretty good job playing games provided you do one upgrade to it first. And we're gonna dive into this machine and take a look at what you need to do in just a second. But I do wanna let you know in the interest of full disclosure that I paid for this with my own funds. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. No one is paying for this review, nor has anyone reviewed or approved what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this laptop is all about. Now the price point on this one as configured is $559. We typically see a number of AMD powered laptops in this price point. And what I like about these is that they're often not heavily marketed, but they can deliver some really decent performance. But you will of course have some trade-offs versus more expensive computers, namely in the quality of the display along with the overall build quality. Now this one actually doesn't have a bad display for the price. This is a 14 inch 1080p display. It's IPS, it's got decent viewing angles. It doesn't reflect light all that much, so it's a relatively low glare display. Uh, this is my studio light, so that's kind of a worst case scenario, but it actually looks really good. Uh, it's 250 nits though, so it's not all that bright, but I do like uh, how good images and videos appear on it. It's not a professional photo editing display by any means, but it's a lot better than what I typically see in this segment of the market. Now inside this has that Ryzen 5500U processor. It has eight gigabytes of RAM and 256 gigabytes of storage. Now, as you can see here, we took it apart during one of my live streams the other day and it has two RAM slots on board, but it ships with only one of those RAM slots occupied. It has a single DDR4 3200 eight gigabyte module in there. And these AMD laptops need both of those RAM slots occupied for the best performance. So my advice is to go out and get, when you buy this, another DDR4 3200 eight gigabyte module and install it right when you get the laptop. We did that also on a live stream the other day. And that is going to dramatically improve your performance. And you'll see that improvement when we take a look at some of the benchmarks that we ran to measure the performance of this one. It's pretty remarkable how much better this will run with that second stick of RAM. So definitely do that uh, when you purchase it. Uh, one thing to note here is that it's fairly easy to get into the laptop. You can see there's some visible screws here, but there's also screws underneath these rubber feet. And you gotta be really careful when you're peeling them off so that you can reapply them later. Now, if you look underneath those RAM slots there, there's an NVMe SSD. That can very easily be swapped out for a higher capacity one. It also has a Realtek Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card that you'll see there on the right. And that card supports Wi-Fi 6 and all of the latest Bluetooth technologies and can be swapped out if you're preferring to use something other than what it comes with. Now we look at a lot of laptops here on the channel and it always amazes me that the lower cost ones are the most upgradable and the more expensive ones typically are not. It's kind of funny. Uh, now the build quality on this one is not spectacular. It is all plastic. It comes in at just under three pounds or 1.35 kilograms. So it's not all that heavy. It just doesn't feel all that premium. Uh, the keyboard kind of bends a little bit as you're typing on it, as you can see. Uh, the keys themselves are well spaced, but it feels spongy. It's just not a very good feeling keyboard, although I've typed on worse. Uh, the trackpad here is very narrow, very cheap feeling and springy. So that's one thing that I wasn't crazy about here was just the overall build quality. So just be aware of that. They do cut corners somewhere and they chose the overall build here to do that. Uh, there is an SD card slot here on the left hand side. And as you can see, the card goes mostly in, but does stick out a bit. It doesn't have one of those eject mechanisms. So you have to kind of pry it out of the side if you do put a card in there. Uh, so it's probably not something that you'll leave the card in and walk around with. Uh, other ports on here include a headphone microphone jack. You have a USB type C port here, but this is just for data devices. This does not work with video output, nor does it accept power delivery. This is just data. Uh, you also have two USB 3 slots next to it. Uh, all three of these USB ports run at the Gen 1 5 gigabit per second speeds. I did connect an ethernet adapter up to it earlier and it worked fine, but you're not gonna get 
the 10 gigabit speeds on more expensive laptops. And of course, this does not support Thunderbolt either. There is an HDMI port here, but this is HDMI 1.4 only. So this will support 4K displays, but only at 30 frames per second. And this is the only HDMI output on it. And you've got your power plug over here for plugging in its included power adapter. Battery life on this isn't bad for the price point. You're probably going to be in the seven to eight hour territory, depending on what you're doing with it. If you're gaming or video editing, obviously much less battery life doing those things. But the basic tasks, I think, with the display brightness at a reasonable level will probably get you closer to the eight and a half hour mark. Just don't expect miracles out of these low cost machines. All right, let's take a look now and see how it performs. We're going to begin with web browsing and work our way up from there. I'm gonna load up the Google Chrome browser here and visit the nasa.gov homepage. And you can see how quickly everything renders in when we click on stuff. Uh, this performance is really on par with what I typically see out of the top end Intel laptop processors, at least for doing some of the basics here. And you probably won't notice all that much of a performance difference visually uh, with one stick of RAM versus two when you're browsing the web and doing email and some of the basic kinds of tasks. It's really when you get into gaming where things really start to take a different turn. So overall, it performs great and uh, performs as well as a computer that might cost twice as much when you're doing the basics. Let's take a look now and see how it does with YouTube. So here we've got one of my 1080p 60 frames per second videos playing and it looks like it's able to sustain playback without dropping any frames. Uh, this means you'll have a good experience on YouTube, on Twitch, on Netflix, and many of the other video providers out there. And again, the display isn't too bad for consuming video. And on the browserbench.org speedometer benchmark test, we got a score of 145.9. That's with two sticks of RAM installed. Uh, that puts this right in line with what we see out of the i5s and the i7s from Intel in this current generation. And again, you won't see that much of a performance difference doing this stuff with only a single stick of RAM installed. Now there is a webcam on board here at the top. It's your run of the mill 720p webcam. Uh, that's what it looks like. It's not gonna win you any awards, but it's good enough for doing Zoom calls and that sort of thing. Uh, and the processor of course is more than capable of conducting video conferences. Now the built-in speakers on this are not great. They are located right here. They are stereo. Uh, so you'll get some decent stereo separation, but the sound quality is definitely lacking. So it's adequate for web conferences. They're actually pretty loud for that purpose. But if you're going to listen to music, I would suggest plugging in headphones or using a nice pair of Bluetooth headphones because the range of sound out of these speakers is not great. Let's take a look now at some games. Now this is Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, we were running this at 1080p at the absolute lowest settings, and it actually was pretty playable. Uh, this is about 20 to 25 frames per second at that resolution and frame rate, but we got between 30 and 35 frames per second when we ran it at 720p, and I think that's very playable and kind of surprising, actually, for a laptop in this price category. Again, that's with two sticks of RAM installed. Uh, this is Doom Eternal. Again, uh, 1080p, lowest settings, and here we were getting about 45 to 50 frames per second, believe it or not, which was pretty impressive. So that was a lot of fun to play on this one. And of course, 720p did even better than that. Uh, we also checked out No Man's Sky. Uh, this is 1080p at standard settings, uh, which is basically their equivalent of low settings. And when we were uh, playing around here, we were in the 30 frames per second category, give or take. Uh, this game varies a bit depending on whether or not you're on the ground or in space. And they recently updated the game to be a little more demanding graphically, but it was very playable at 1080p here with those settings at a minimum. And it did a little better again when we went to 720p. So you can really play uh, some current games on this one provided you add that second stick of RAM. Now, a few weeks ago, we looked at another laptop that has the same processor on board. That one had dual channel memory, but only eight gigabytes of RAM total. And we couldn't get some of those games to run properly at 1080p. And that's because it only had eight gigs. So having 16 gigs with this chip appears to be the sweet spot, especially if you wanna play some games. Now let's take a look at the 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. And we're going to begin by comparing this laptop against itself. So check this out. With two sticks of RAM installed, we got a score of 1,215 but only half of that score when we had just one stick installed. And that's a good indicator here as to why you want to put that second stick of memory in there. It really makes a big difference for games. And that benchmark 
really shows the difference between the two configuration options you've got here. And with those two sticks of RAM on board, you can see just how competitive this Ryzen 5500U is against the uh, top-end Intel i7s with XE graphics on board. Uh, we typically see that chip in more expensive laptops. This one is keeping right up with it, and it's also doing a lot better than what we saw on the 4500U uh, from last year. So altogether, AMD continues to drive the market forward, and this is great for consumers because you can get a really nicely performing laptop here at a pretty reasonable price. And on the 3D Mark stress test, we got a failing grade of 89.5%. And it was interesting because I didn't see anything all that noticeable in the games that I was playing. They ran pretty consistently at the frame rates you just saw. So I took a look at the chart that uh, 3D Mark keeps when you run this test. And it looks like it does throttle down initially, but then stays pretty stable after that initial throttling. So I think whatever frame rate you uh, see under uh, your usual gameplay scenario will likely stay fairly stable but it wasn't able to maintain the performance it had initially on this test throughout the entire run. Now this does have a fan on board. It's not all that noisy even when it's under load. So as fan noise goes, this is probably on the lower end of the scale. So if you're very sensitive to that kind of thing, uh, this is not a bad choice if you want to still have some performance, especially for playing games. Uh, the fan doesn't generally kick on all that often. It's only when you really place the computer under load or it's doing some kind of updating in the background. Now, as usual, we booted up Ubuntu 21.04 to see how well everything runs. Uh, video and audio were detected properly. You can see it's pretty responsive here, just like it was in Windows. But unfortunately, the Realtek Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module was not detected. I'll put an image of that up on screen now so you can see if you might be able to track down some drivers for it. Or you could, of course, swap it out completely for something that's more compatible. Now, overall, I felt this was a decent laptop for the price point. I'm not crazy about the build quality. The keyboard I can live with, but the trackpad is something that I have not been crazy about uh, as I've been playing with this machine. But with that second stick of RAM installed, and yes, I know I'm a broken record on that, uh, you really will have a nicely performing computer that will surprise you, especially when you're playing games on it. So all in, I continue to be very excited about what AMD has brought to the market, especially in this segment of it. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Jim Callagher, Hot Sauce and Video Games, and Brian Parker. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.